tired of being pushed around. He was tired of feeling what? Frustrated. He came back on that stage. He grabbed that microphone with a mercy that is here. I don't care if you don't want to hear me sing. I got a song inside me and I'm going to let it out. I don't care if you're all asleep, I'm going to wake you up. I don't care if I am nervous. And that frog took a deep breath. And then the style of what we now call the boogie woogie, he began to bellow out his tune. Do ba 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 ba do 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 ba the elephant opened one eye and then she opened the other eye frog what is that sound i like it she jumped up on the stage and she began to do a dance we now call the bump. <laughs> 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 ah. Said the lion, I like it too. The lion started shaking his hips this away and that away, doing a dance we now call the twist. Soon the snakes were in the boogaloo, and Brother Fox were in the mashed potatoes. Everybody stand up and do your thing. Come on, we're gonna clap and do ba do ba do ba. All the animals started joining in. Yeah, come on. Do ba 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 do
five potato, six potato, seven potato more. Come on. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven potato more. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. That's all, folks. There ain't no more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was that a great performance or what? I'm still here and I've got my blues and my bebop on and just having a great time. And we've got lots of questions for Linda and Papa Ed. Um, what a unique and wonderful art form they have mastered. And before we get to our audience questions, um, Linda, I think it's impossible to overstate the importance of the oral tradition of passing down these stories from one generation to the next. Your family did that. Talk about how important that is for all of us as people. Well, I grew up on storytelling. I grew up on storytelling, pinto beans, cornbread, and fried apples. And my Uncle Buster was a storyteller, my mother, my father, Granddaddy Murphy, and that's how I remember them, because they have all passed on. But bits and pieces of those stories and their lives are with me. And that is why storytelling is so important, because it connects us as human beings. So I'm very thankful that I remember some of the stories that they passed on to me. Could you tell us how you specifically started? I know you, you know, your heritage has been really uh, important in your background, but how did, what was your first event and how did you actually get into storytelling? Well, I started telling stories on the campus of Howard University in a place called a punch out. That was a student center and it was called a punch out because if you stayed there long enough, you'd punch out of school. So I would tell stories about my family life there. And I was majoring in drama at the time. And so for my senior project, I developed a whole program on storytelling. My professor thought it was very unorthodox, but I got an A. And that kind of encouraged me to keep this up. Then you know, I married, I had children, and I began to tell stories to my children. And my husband was a professor at Howard. And he came in one day and said, Linda, they're looking for a storyteller. And I said, honey, here I am. And that's how I got, got started, literally out of the, you know, the kitchen, out of the house, and just started telling stories. Ladies, your names and questions. Great. Good afternoon, Ms. Goss. It was so wonderful to be here with you, you and Papa Ed. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Amanda Kemp, and I'm here with my friend Mary Kennedy. And we lead a reader's theater program in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for elementary students. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, um, do you ever work with elementary aid kids in creating a story or performing oh, a story? Yes. yes, I do. I used to teach storytelling for elementary students ages K, first, and second. So I love doing stories in the classroom. And Linda, of course, our program is entitled Can't Tell a Lie, Peach Cobbler Pie. Mm -hmm. uh, where does that come from? Is that one of your stories? As well, well, that's a true story about my mother, who was a great cook, but she was a school teacher. And so she didn't cook. Uh, real big dinners during the week. And father got tired of canned goods and instant cooking, so he brought home a whole sack of fresh peaches and told her to cook them. Told her to make a peach cobbler pie. She didn't do it. She hid those peaches, she got a can of peaches, and she made the best cobbler pie you ever tasted. But later that night, as we were sitting in the living room, my brother had gotten in the kitchen, he had found those peaches, and he started rolling them across the living room floor like they were baseballs. And my mother, being such a religious person, said, oh, Junior, I can't tell a lie. I, 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 I used a can of peaches. But Daddy wasn't mad, because that pie was so good. So that's where that comes from. <laughs> it's Stokes. We are fascinated by those instruments that you're playing. And I couldn't help but notice um, what an integral part music plays in storytelling. Tell us about that and why music is so important to passing down these stories. Well, one thing. I play a lot of blues. And when I trace the blues back, it goes all the way back to different parts of Africa, West Africa. And the griot, they were musicians <clears throat> who actually told stories. And they used, they played various stringed instruments. So storytelling, you can take it all the way back to Africa, which you tell stories about life, you tell stories about how to act, how what to do. So music is and storytelling go hand in hand. 
how do we find out where else you would appear? Well, I'm on different websites, and I do a lot for PHC. Okay. So I'll be throughout all of Pennsylvania, and they have my schedule up. So okay. check with them. Also check with navsinc.org, N-A-B-S-I-N-C.org. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And NAVS is the National Association, Association of, of Black, Black Storytellers. Story okay, great. Amy. Your name and your question for our guests. Yes, my name's Amy, um, and welcome, Linda, to thank Harrisburg. You. It's wonderful thank to you, have Amy. you here. Um, my, my question is, um, obviously, there's a lot of entertainment value to mm -hmm, storytelling, mm -hmm. but stories mm -hmm. also have some pretty important messages. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you have had an opportunity or if you could imagine some opportunities for people to use storytelling mm -hmm as a way to address civic or social mm -hmm. concerns in their mm -hmm. communities and neighborhoods? Oh, definitely, because actually the frog story is considered a healing story. And many times it is used in the classroom, it is in many readers uh, for seventh and eighth grade readers, and it is used for everyone to realize that you're special, you're unique, and you have a talent. And it really is to build your confidence. So most of my stories really deal with a type of a message. Many of them are fables in that, in that they teach us a lesson, and I think it's very important. Even a funny story can have a meaning in it. We are going to take a short break right now, and we're going to talk humanities a little bit. You know, it wasn't too long ago that PCN's Brian Lockman got together with PHC's Ann Benzel to talk about the humanities. Here they are. Ann Bensel, you are currently the chair of the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. What is the Pennsylvania Humanities Council? The Pennsylvania Humanities Council is a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to promote the humanities and cultural events throughout the state. What does that word mean, the humanities? Humanities has many different meanings to different people. But to me, uh, my definition would be the humanities are those elements or entities that touch us in special ways in our everyday lives. For me, uh, it's the arts, it's literature, it's history. The humanities are learning experiences that teach us a lot about who we are, where we came from, and hopefully where we're going. Now how does the Pennsylvania Humanities Council promote the humanities? Through programming. Uh, we have some absolutely wonderful programs that um, are far-reaching across the entire state. I'd love to tell you just a little bit about them. One of my personal favorites uh, are the Commonwealth Speakers, who really visit every county in Pennsylvania, telling stories, uh, small performances. Uh, another absolute favorite is Read All About It, and this uh, is through the library system. It encourages not only reading, but discussing what you've read. Another great program that we offer is a grants program. We offer uh, grants to local organizations to support their programs and also to assist in bringing our programs into the area. How often do you have these events? We are part of partnerships within the community, uh, weekly, monthly, seasonal. It, it depends. Check our calendar. It's listed at www.pahumanities.org on the web. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Joining Linda Goss is Papa Ed Stokes. He is a multi-instrumentalist. He plays instruments from all over the world, and many of them he makes himself. He's also got a deep love for the Mississippi Delta Blues, as you'll be hearing. So please join me again as we welcome Linda Goss and Papa Ed Stokes. Papa Ed, take it away. Drop it off. <laughs> down for a minute like you're doing and I'm gonna teach you a song my mother taught me called Head and Shoulders. Have you ever played Head and Shoulders before? Yeah. You have haven't you? Let me see you do it. One, two, ready, go. Head and shoulders. Knees up. 